Welcome to the Dell DOT training series on ADA compliance. This video provides an overview on the use of detectable warning services in the public right of way. To help pedestrians with visual impairments, detectable warning surfaces are placed at the boundary between pedestrian and vehicular routes. They provide a tactile cue where there is a flush connection between the sidewalk and the street. Bell Dot commonly uses truncated dome detectable warning surfaces that are manufactured as precast blocks. The stick-on versions are not acceptable for permanent Dell Dot installations. Dell Dot requires the truncated dome detectable warning surfaces to adhere to dome pattern, dome size, and dome spacing requirements found in the standard construction details and the standard specifications. This is to ensure the intended tactile cue can be felt underfoot. Detectable warning surfaces are required to contrast visually to the surface in which they are applied. This figure shows the department's visual contrast preferences. The accessibility standards require their use at pedestrian connections to street crossings, pedestrian refuge islands, unless the distance between the truncated dome detectable warning surfaces would be less than two feet, pedestrian at grade rail crossings, pedestrian at grade rail crossings on pathways that are not along a street, Boarding platforms at transit stops for buses and rail vehicles where the edges of the boarding platform are not protected by screens or guards. And boarding and alighting areas at sidewalk or street level transit stops for rail vehicles where the side of the boarding and alighting areas facing the rail vehicles is not protected by screens or guards. Boarding platforms require that the truncated dome detectable warning surface extend the full length of the public use area of the platform. The detectable warning surface is not required where there is a curb at a bus boarding and alighting area. Where a bus boarding and alighting area is flush with the street level, it must have a detectable warning surface that extends the full length of the transit stop. For pedestrian connections, the accessibility standards require that the truncated dome detectable warning surface extend a minimum of two feet in the direction of pedestrian travel. The placement location of truncated dome detectable warning surfaces varies based on application and is prescribed in the accessibility standards. The locations prescribed have been chosen to ensure clear, uniform, and consistent messaging to the user. Placement on pedestrian connections varies based on pedestrian connection type. Parallel curb ramps are to have the truncated dome detectable warning surface installed on the full width of the turning space at the flush transition between the street and the sidewalk. Depressed corners are to have the truncated dome detectable warning surface installed at the back of the curb along the entire length of the flush transition between the street and the sidewalk. For perpendicular curb ramps, placement varies based on the location of the bottom ramp grade break relative to the curb line. The simplest application is when the grade break of the curb ramp is in line with the curb line as shown. In these cases, the truncated dome detectable warning surface is to be placed at the back of the curb. When the grade break is not in line with the curb line, the placement of the truncated dome detectable warning surface is dependent upon the longest distance from the grade break to the back of the curb. When this distance is less than 5 feet, the truncated dome detectable warning surface should be placed in line with the grade break, as shown here. When the distance is greater than 5 feet, the detectable warning surface should be placed at the back of the curb. Truncated dome detectable warning surfaces may be added to hazardous locations where pedestrians with visual impairments should be signaled to stop. These locations may include commercial entrances with yield or stop control, locations with inadequate sight distance for pedestrians or oncoming vehicles, and locations where the driver or pedestrian's decision making may be complicated by turning movements. Entrances that function like minor streets with speeds of 25 miles per hour or greater and or traffic volumes exceeding 400 vehicles per day should be considered for full pedestrian crossing features, including detectable warning surfaces at the pedestrian connections. We hope you found this video helpful in providing an overview of the use of detectable warning surfaces in the public right of way. Please consult with Dell Dot's ADA Title II Coordinator 
for accessibility guidance on your project.